Alright, it's time for another math. Easy solution to discuss. Uh, well, just some uh, guidelines for curve sketching uh, to do it by hand. Basically, uh, here's a uh, list of the, the guidelines you should look up before you would sketch the graph at the last step. Basically, look at the domain, intercepts, symmetry, asymptotes, intervals of increase and decrease, the local maximum, and then the concavity and points of inflection. Now, if you look at the first step, domain, this is basically just the values of x where, uh, where f of x is defined. And this usually arises like you'll sh usually have values of x where it there isn't defined when you have something like 1 divided by 0 or whatnot. Now part B of the guidelines basically intercepts, uh, well there's two intercepts, there's the y intercept and the uh, x intercepts. And the, the y intercept is basically when x is equal to 0 or this is just f of 0 and then for the x intercept is just you, you set y is equal to 0 and solve for x. Except uh, if the ca if the calculation looks pretty uh, pretty hard, you don't really need to. Uh, you could just skip this step if it if it looks too hard, if the equation is too complex. And then uh, this part C of the guidelines basically look into symmetry. This will make things a lot easier to graph. Basically, there's three kinds. If you have an even function, where basically f of uh, f of negative x is equals to f of x. So then you'll have like for example. Uh, Let's say y equals x squared. It's it's going to be the same uh, if you put negative x or positive x, and it, and basically if you were to graph it, you would have the same thing on the left and right side. So this is an even function. This is a symmetric about the y-axis, and the other kind of a uh, symmetric function is you could have an odd function, where basically if you have f of negative x, this just equals to negative f of x. And one example is a, let's say y equals sine, sine of x, and as you can see, it's uh, it's uh, symmetric about the y-axis, but it's like a negatively uh, symmetric. So basically, this is how the sine, sine wave looks like. This one's like this. Yeah, as you can see, this is uh, negative of f of x. If this is f of x positive, this is just negative f of x on this side here. Now the last kind of uh, symmetric functions are basically periodic functions, like uh, trigonomic functions. Where if you have something like f of x plus p, if this equals to f of x, then basically the p is, uh, is considered the period. And uh, an example again is sine of x, basically sine x has a period of 2 pi, let's go p equals to and then when you were to graph it, it's basically something like this, where, let's say this is right here. The graph looks lo something like this. It keeps going on and on, but as you can see that if this is every every single 2 pi is always the same here. So at the, at between here and here, if this is uh, f of x value, f of x plus 2 pi is the same thing. The value is going to be the same. And this, this distance is 2 pi. So basically, 2 pi apart is always the same. Similarly, for this, this is 2 pi apart from all the way to here. This is the x axis. Yeah, so that's basically uh, periodic functions. And knowing this, you could easily graph the entire curve uh, just by knowing this quickly so without having to know what the values are, are at everywhere. So now, the part D of the guidelines look at asymptotes here. Basically, there's uh, multiple kinds. Uh, one of the kinds is if you have a horizontal asymptote. And this is basically uh, when you have something, let's say, like limit as x approaches either infinity of f of x. And then if this, let's say you get a number l. So if it's approaching a set number, let's call it l, or you have uh, yes, yeah, so that's basically a, a horizontal asymptote or limit as x approaches negative infinity, and this is of f x equals to l. So, for example, you would have something like this. So, let's say x is x is here. If you're approaching infinity here, and let's say it's reaching a number l in this case, this is l here, and it's it's a horizontal number zero. So, as you go to infinity, it's there. Or similarly, if you go to negative infinity. So this is a horizontal asthma, it was good to know. But in these cases, if the limits, uh, if the limits as x goes to uh, plus or minus infinity of f of x, if it equals to infinity, or uh, then you don't have an asymptote, but basically it just keeps going up or keeps going down, just go plus or minus, then the, you don't have a horizontal asymptote here, no uh, asymptote. 
But nonetheless, this is still useful to know when you're graphing. Now the uh, other kind of asymptote you get is a vertical asymptote here. And this basically arises from one of these four cases. If you have limit as x approaches a from uh, the right side, that's what this plus means, of fx equals to infinity. Or if you have limit fx equals infinity as x approaches a from the left side, so negative means. Or if it's approaching from the right side and its limit is to negative infinity, or if it's approaching from the left and it's, it's uh, negative infinity here. And for uh, rational numbers, you could usually find the vertical asymptote by uh, looking at when the denominator is zero and is and then just finding which values are that. But basically, uh, it's important to know which one of these is true, like which which one of these statements is uh, for the function that you're trying to graph. And usually, you, you should apply this limit whenever, uh, let's say, f of a is not defined. Yeah, so I should apply for that one. Now part D of the guidelines basically look at intervals of increase or decrease of uh, the function. Basically you, you would use the interval uh, increase decrease test or whatnot and basically you would just take the derivative f of x and find when find when it's increasing or decreasing or when it's positive or negative. So now if we were to look at uh, part F of the guidelines of curve sketching, basically look at local max or minimum. The first thing you would always do in this case is find the critical numbers. And these critical numbers are basically whenever you have the case of, uh, let's say, F of C. Is it, we'll just call this critical numbers uh, C. When F of C, the derivative at C is either equal to zero or they don't exist. And then once you get the critical numbers, you could either do the first derivative test, which is easier, or the second derivative test to find local max and minimum. Yeah, the first derivative is usually a preferred over the second derivative test, but uh, I'll just show you what the, they both are. The first derivative test basically uh, at the critical points, if let's say f of x uh, changes, your, your derivative changes from a positive to a negative, uh, to negative or greater than zero, this is just greater than zero, and this is less than zero. Uh, less than zero here, then basically this is, let's say, at C, which is a critical point, then this is a local max. And similarly, if f of x changes from uh, negative to positive, then it's the local minimum. And as you can see from uh, this one here, when it changes from negative to, po to positive, this just means something like this. You're going down your derivative, and then you're going up, so that's a local minimum. And then this one, you're going your derivative is increasing and then it's going back down to the local max, this local minimum. And then second derivative test is basically when you, you could apply this if you know that f uh, or the second derivative of f, f double prime of c, if it's not equal to zero then then what you could uh, you could tell just by looking at if f, f uh, double prime of c is greater than zero then this just means yeah if it's greater than zero this, just, this is a local minimum local min and then if it, if f double prime of c is, is less than zero then this is a local max and remember this is a second derivative so then what it's uh, what it's really saying is 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 for this one right here if it's greater than zero at this part right here what it means is the rate of change of the slope is increasing here so then if it's increasing here you can have a local minimum and then the local max is basically when it, it's it's getting less than zero everywhere. So this is concave up, it's concave down for whenever um, f double prime of c is less than zero. You can see my uh, other video on second order test and first order test for uh, just more clarification on this. And also, uh, let's go back to the part D, the asymptotes. I forgot to mention that there's uh, one other asymptotes that you could look for, but I haven't uh, discussed this in my math easy videos yet. These are basically slant asymptotes, and I'm gonna do that in a further video. This one's basically when you have an asymptote such that it's like a slanted one here and then the number it follows this slanted uh, number here as, as this goes to infinity this way. But uh, we'll explain this one's a bit more complex, we'll explain this in another video. So now if we look at part G of the guidelines, uh, basically we'll look at conc concavity and points of inflection. And this is basically like I showed above here, if f f double prime the second derivative of, of x is greater than zero then this is concave upwards this is our concave up so basically this is it's something like this here and then the uh, if, if it's uh, less than zero here then this is concave down 
and the inflection point is when the concavity changes at, at a point. So usually, let's say at, at, at x value where basically the concavity changes. And you could have something like something like this right here, where it, it is something like that, where it changes from concave up to concave down, or the opposite of it, where you would have concave down and concave up here. So these are inflection points, these two right here. Now the last step is, uh, is part A, just sketch the curve. So first we would uh, draw the asymptotes lines. And these are usually uh, dashed lines, and we would plot all of our uh, our important uh, information we got like uh, intercepts, inflection points, and our maximum and minimums, and then we would, yeah, then we make the curve uh, basically in, uh, intercept on these, like go on these points, but uh, like either rising or uh, or decreasing depending on the concavity and uh, increase decrease test. And oh, uh, yeah, just wrote that down. Also, you could. Um, yeah, if needed, uh, what you could do is plot out uh, certain points. Well, of the derivative, you could, so you could plot out uh, f of x values at, let's say, certain locations, uh, just to make it more accurate. Yeah, yeah this video is getting a bit long, so I'm gonna probably do uh, an example video next time on using the these gu guidelines on several uh, curves here. Basically, keep in mind of all these is put, uh, try to uh, basically put all this together. I showed earlier videos on all of these separately, but now I'm finally going to put them together. So make sure you uh, keep these in mind when graphing, and it, this is important, especially because uh, when using graphing calculator, it, you might not be able to get everything accurately, like local max or minimum, because you would have to zoom in at the uh, correct locations. You might be misled and whatnot. Well, it's all for today. Hopefully, I learned and um, stay tuned for next time and uh, for, stay tuned for another math.